So we're back. I don't. I don't even care. Basically, uh, welcome back to Silent Hill Two, where uh, you were talking about Cinderella, and I had to interrupt yeah. you, and I apologize. No, don't apologize. All right. We have a specific time limit, so. Well, I mean, I, I, I try to keep them under a specific time, but yeah. at the same time, I, I mean, I don't want to ruin the, the flow of things, and I mean, we have pretty good flow right now. Yeah. We're going to the second floor, and that's really all there is to say about this. We're just kind of exploring all, all this. So, um, the thing is with Cinderella is there, there are so many versions across so many cultures. I have a book that outlines over 300 different versions of the t fairy tale mm -hmm. across the world. Um, the one that from the Disney movie is based on the Charles Perrault version, which might actually be Charles Perrault. I, I don't remember. It's, he's French. That's the Fair thing. enough. I mean, you, you know, we got the, uh, we got the Ampule, but I think it, you can also say it as... Um, Ampule. Ampule, yeah. I think both are technically correct. And I, I believe it is French, but it's like uh, a syringe with a, a sample. Yeah. It's like a syringe with a needle. So basically it's one of those injector things, and I'm willing to bet it's like morphine or something. Something to keep James going and recover at full health. I don't know. So the original Charles Perrault version, uh, well, not the I should stop saying original because I have no idea if it's original or not. Yeah, it's fine. Your but interpretation of the original. The, the the Charles Perrault version is pretty close to the Disney um, book, plus or minus a few small details that were probably changed to make it more modern. Mm -hmm. um, the ones from the Grimm's Brothers, though, was far more Wait, wait, wait. So there's two different versions when... There's 300 versions. Well, I, okay, all right. <laughs> so you have the Grimm's Brother, you have Charles Perrault. Yeah, Perrault, Perrault, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying something, right? Yeah, it's, so, it's, something. It's, it's it, yeah, okay. Anyways, continue. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Um, but in that one, one, it starts out pretty much the same. The father marries the stepmother, the stepsisters come in, everyone treats her horribly. And the stepfather is just kind of like try to get along with them. He goes out to uh, on a trip and he asks them what they want uh, to bring back. And uh, the sisters say jewels and nice clothes. So oh hell yeah! I mean, I, w I would ask for that kind of stuff too if I was uh, if I w if I was a girl. I I'd be a terrible girl. I'd be very stereotypical. <laughs> uh, Cinderella, however, asks for the first branch that hits his head. Oh. Which and I, I don't remember what type of tree it is, but on his it, way it back, it sounds very painful. On, on the way back, a, a branch smacks his head as he's riding on his mm -hmm. horse, and he breaks it off and brings it home. I should mention uh, there is a thing here. But it's hard to tell. But there's a key. Uh, sometimes when you try to grab it, you will keep clicking on this, and so you may not think anything of it. But just, just a little game pro tip right there. Because I know all of you are so curious to, to figure that one out. Anyways. So, um, she plants the branch in her mother's grave. And it grows overnight into this big, beautiful tree. With doves that give her gifts. Okay. Uh, and then from there, it pretty much progresses on fairly normal, only with birds instead of mice. Um, and eventually she does get to go to... The ball. The ball. Yeah. However, the ball is not one night. It's like a week long. What? It's for the prince's coronation. Oh, okay. So, you know, he's really trying to find a, a suitable wife. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure if it's his coronation or his coming of age, something like that. Anyways, iconic. Oh, there yeah. we go. I knew that was happening. I just uh, I didn't want to interrupt the surprise. Uh, <laughs> um, so she actually encounters him a couple of times, and the doves give her um, dresses for each night, each one getting more elaborate and ornate than the last. But every time the prince spots her, she runs away. Oh. And sometimes, and she like, and it just goes to show, it like ties back into her common roots because it's like through a hen house or mm -hmm. something. But eventually, he does get the slipper, like always. And uh, when he comes to the Cinderella, Cinderella's house with the sisters, the sisters 
cut off pieces of their feet. And what? Like the, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just that's so fucked up. It's, it's just not funny. One cuts off her toe, a couple of toes, and the other cuts off her heel. And is like, voila, I fit into this shoe. Also, I, I, I just got to interrupt. Uh, there's really no indication to do that, but yeah, that, that's what you got to do. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, but no, that, that's really fucked up. Yeah. And each time as they're uh, starting to go home, the dove from the tree flies out and says, look at, look at, look at, there's blood coming from her shoe. Aww. And so he rides back and he leaves them there <laughs> with their bloody feet. Aww. <laughs> um, so. I'm about to cry. And then. For Cinderella, multiple reasons. Then Cinderella puts her foot in the bloody shoe, but. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't like Cinderella. Well, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say I didn't like Cinderella. Uh, Cinderella has never been, like, my, my, my thing. Uh, it's not my jam Disney movie. Also, I know this is really annoying, but there's a reason for it. You see, you go, you go here, you try to click on the thing, like, the basement or the first floor or the third floor. Oh. That. You can't do anything. You, it basically says that and you get a loud annoying alarm and so basically yeah, you just gotta put everything. Oh, that sucks. Everything. You know how you had some nice things? You know how you had protection? You know, you know how you had your safety net? No, you're basically Cinderella in this point. That sucks. Bloody shoe. But, yes, yeah, so she puts her foot in the bloody shoe, but it fits like a glove. And so she gets to finally go, and at their wedding... Goodbye, Cinderella. Bloody shoe. At the, at, at the wedding, the sisters and the stepmother show up. Um, she finds a way to transport the tree to the castle grounds. And the doves fly in and peck out the eyes of the sisters and the stepmother. Oh, and everyone lives oh. happily ever after. I mean, I was going to say, you know, like, that, that seems like a pretty, pretty dope uh, situation. Because, you know, the, the, the stepsisters and, you know, the uh, mother-in-law, they're kind of, they're kind of not cool. They're kind of lame. But in fact, Snow White was originally 12 years old. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that. By the way, would you like to talk about Snow White a little sure. bit? All right. Yeah, well, the Snow White, the story isn't hugely different. Okay, so, um, you know, you got the evil queen. She she turns into an old hag. Yeah, and Cinderella stays with... By the way... Seven dwarves. Oh, Snow White, there we go. <laughs> um, Iconic it, timing. The 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 main the difference is is the way that the queen is handled mm. at the end. Um, well, you know, she, she really desperately wants to be the fairest in the land. Well, they put her in iron shoes that have been laying on a fire. What? And she dances until she falls and she oh, dances no. until she falls dead. That, that's that's not a good that's that's a terrible situation. I'm sad. <laughs> I I I uh, poor queen. But then again, she was evil to begin with, so I, I don't know if I can really feel that sad for, you know, good riddance. Uh, but at the same time, that's harsh. There's actually most of, like, the princess and the frog. The oh, princess originally, no. the, the princess lost her ball into the lake and couldn't go, and she was sad. And so the frog was like, you have to do me a favor. She's like, okay, so he goes and brings her ball back, and he's like, I need you to kiss me. And keep in mind that the princess is very young. Like, super young. Mm hmm What is that? A videotape. You know is what that videotape that is, right? Yeah. The game's trying to portray it as something else, but you and I both know what videotape that is, right? Yep. Are you ready to go see that videotape? Yes, let's go see that Well, video I mean, it's, go it's still going to be a while, so, you know, continue on with the, fro the frog and princess. Uh, the, the child is like, no, I'm not going to do it. I have my ball, and you can fuck off, and I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my family. So the frog follows her and tells the king, like, their exchange. And the king is like, you must um, honor your agreement. She's like, no, I'm not going to. So when she lays down for her nap, that's right, she's that young that she's needing a nap. Uh, <laughs> she's really young. Uh, the frog jumps up near her bed and she and is like I need I guess and she gets frustrated with it and she throws him at a wall. Aww. And that's how he becomes the prince. That That is a really <laughs> fucked up way to become a prince. I mean like there are many ways I could see someone becoming a prince. That is not one of them. Let, let's like to say here if I shoot you in the head you will become not only royalty you'll become emperor of the world. Yeah, 
realize I think that I can't remember if she kissed him afterwards or not, but I, I think all she did was throw him against the wall. And he By the him. way, you like being helpless? I don't. No. Nope. Oh shit. Okay, so it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be straight with you. We want to go to the electric room, and then we're be lighting it to the kitchen. Sounds good. Actually, it might. No, the boiler room. We're going to the boiler room. The electrical room is locked. Can you think of anything, any old fairy tales that you'd like me to ruin? Um. No, I no. My childhood is sensitive. It's crying right now. <laughs> it's crying with first aid kits. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't even know. Okay, I'm I'm just like. We're, we're here, I've been traumatized, but mind you, it's, it's not you, it's just like this, it's like, it's like when your hero turns up, like you see your hero in real life, but instead of being like your hero on TV, he's like real, he's like a person, which granted, you know, generally heroes are, but at the same time, you're just like, no, how could this happen? I had this envision, he was brilliant, but now he's just, he's just a person. And, holy shit. How would you like me to, I don't know if it will necessarily ruin it, but are you a huge fan of Hunchback of Notre Dame? Uh, nah. I've always been a Lion King person, which I'm, by the way, please don't ruin the Lion King for me. I don't well, think the, it, hi, the Lion King is basically Hamlet, there's not much... Yeah, but it, it's with fun animal people. But my point and is... And then you have Kimba the White Lion, which, let's be honest, I mean, you, you you could make the argument, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be like, no, it's not true. I'd, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I need to go watch Kimba the White Lion. Um, I got a light bulb also. That, that, we had a can opener, I got a light bulb. There's really not a lot here to really say. So that's why I'm kind of okay with you talking about all these, these mind-shocking versions that are actually real. Also, awesome. let me tell you something. We're in a bar. Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, James, you figure, let's get crunk. But no, he's just uh, going to be like Mary and I shared some nice drinks at the bar. He's, he's reminiscing. So I haven't actually read The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's another book that's on my to-read list. I have it upstairs. But I do know some interesting things that are disturbing. Uh, I didn't know this. I tried to use the bar key, but it's too dark to find it. You you figure like James, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Because you figure like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't open the door because I can't find the keyhole. No, that, that, that's a puzzle right there. That's fucking ridiculous. Right? Okay, so, so Claude Frollo is actually a priest, not a I judge. did know that. All right. And so he rapes Esmeralda. You know what? Based <laughs> on the Disney version, I'm not surprised. And she's only thirteen. In Book. Okay, well, that's a little fucked up. Yeah. Um, just just like our situation now. Did I mention I am defenseless? Uh, I don't like being defenseless. It's kind of bullshit. Also, you know how I told you you kind of get used to the radio, and now that you don't have it, it's kind of it's kind of jarring. It, yeah, it's a little jarring. It kind of fucks with your mind a little bit because you know you randomly run into enemies, and it's like uh, I have I have no safety net. That is not the way I wanted to go. Um. But yeah, the good news is we are on the other side. We all we have to do is go to the one shelf where we uh, we get our items back. Oh, so awesome. so we're almost done with all this. And let me tell you something. I am thankful that I don't have to go defenseless anymore. Also to note, uh, two mannequins. Be careful. And I was gonna say, notice how we have no escort mission now. Yes. That that was only that one section. Lo and behold, we're, we're done with that. Also, the game is very nice about just giving you everything. I'd like to that, point that out. The game just... Is, it's one of the few nice things that yeah. the game does. So, I think I'm going to end it off here. Next time, we're actually going to be getting into a lot of heavy shit based on the game. Yay! Yeah, I mean, things are going to amp up. We're going to get some crucial cutscenes. It's going to be crazy. Shit. Heavy shit. Heavy <laughs> shit. It's like heavy rain, but uh, Silent Hill. That actually sounds really gross when you think about it. 